On this November night in 1914, crusading newsman Tom Dawson and his neighbor, the lilac grower Henry Pembroke, are traveling north on Delaney Road from their homes to the forbidding Gaumont farm, despite the dark and cold of the oncoming northwest winter. With the villainous reverend away for a week, our heroes have determined to call upon the reverend's son, Nathaniel, to reveal their suspicions regarding his infamous father. Though they suspect the reverend in the death of Henry's daughter, Sophie, they are unable to furnish proof. And besides, Gaumont has Harbourview's police force largely under his black hand. If Dawson and Pembroke can't get the old man for murder, they'll ensure that he spends the rest of his treacherous existence in prison for his racketeering activities in the city's old harbour district. On this night, as Tom and Henry make their way north on the Delaney Road, one thing is certain. The Reverend Gaumont is an abomination and he must be stopped. Annex, the continuing story of a peculiar bend in the avenue. Traffic goes north, traffic goes south. The streetcar runs between. And all we can do is try to keep up. Evening, Dawson. You're right on time, meeting me at my gate for this dire appointed errand. I'm more than eager to speak with Nathaniel. You think we can trust him and work with him? I don't know him. He's the blood of the Reverend. And how can he be trusted, given the life and death matters in which we meddle at the moment? Tom, not all sons follow the example set by their father. Although under his father's roof, Nate thinks and can speak for himself. He'll help us, Tom. I can feel it. Well, let that be so. And let us commence to walking, as we won't be getting any warmer as we stand here. How fares Jane? Not well, but we hope for recovery. I spied Nancy's face at your front window just now as we passed. It is through that window, Hank, that my daughter Nancy now experiences the world. Ever since that day and that terrible shock, she won't leave the house. I've had to hire a tutor to give her lessons at home. It appears she's lost all interest in writing, and that, that's a shame. That is not my Nancy. Notice the wide berth that driver afforded the north end of your property. That old house that sits there. Do you know much about that house? Only that it came with the land and has been untenanted for some years. Nate Gomon didn't have much to say about it, just that it ought to be torn down as an eyesore and nuisance. Well, there's a story behind that house, Hank. Behind your land. It's about the people who lived in it before you and the other family in these parts who defied the Reverend and what became of them. Locals have been whispering this story by firelight for some years, but I pieced it together from old files at the Looking Glass. The Bats family. Don't be coy. What became of them? No one knows. They vanished overnight. Never seen or heard from again about ten years ago. The house was left standing all this time? It was. And some say that it was left as if the family had just stepped away. Furniture, clothing, everything left behind. Why was the house left standing? Well, they say it was to send a message. To leave the Bat's house and its awful mystery as a testament to the folly of defying the Reverend Gaumont. What's the Reverend got to do with it? With the Bat's family gone, he was able to buy their land and add it to his holdings, which had, over the years, slowly crept south on Delaney. The Bat's land became Gaumont's south tract, and now it's part of your lilac sanctuary. Did the Reverend do away with them? Many believe so. If anyone knows what became of the Bats family, it's the Reverend, and possibly his hired man, Sabansky. If what you're saying has any truth, Tom, then it raises our stakes all the more. We can do nothing about dear Sophie, but I won't allow the Pembroke family to end up like Bats and his brood. We need Nate Gomon as our inside man. 
Here less than a year, my family. Sophie dead. Diana married and on the other side of the continent. Jane unhinged from grief. All around us, the landscape's already changing. Delaney Road will soon be Delaney Avenue. Paving, street lights in early spring. Improvements. Our push club has raised money for the building of a hose house just down the way, and we're assembling a volunteer fire company. Halfway there is growing quickly. In 10 years' time, we may not even recognize it ourselves. Here, we're very near the gate of the Gaumont Farm. Now, why do you tarry when we draw so close to our destination? Look at that night sky, Tom. It certainly is dark out there. For now, good friend. Just for now. Can Tom and Henry convince the sensible Nathaniel Gaumont to aid them in bringing down that old monster Gaumont? Or will the Dawsons and the Pembrokes come to the same unspecified harm as did the Batts family all those years ago? Will they indeed be annexed? Father, responsible for young Sophie's fall. Menaced her right off the cliff, you say. Do you count yourself skeptical? Unfortunately, I can't say that Father is incapable of such an act. I know better. Oh, Hank. I'm so very sorry for what you and your family have lost from coming here. I could have prevented this. You blame yourself. I blame myself. Jane blames herself. Let us stop this. For we are none of us to blame. Only that scourge. From a man like Father, it was a message of revenge, or warning of further escalation. There's a long and established history of Father's enemies winding up in the swamp or the river. This is the reality of which I spoke to you and Jane months ago. Well, I've done my checking, both official sources and unofficial. There's talk that the Reverend is a sort of sinister patron to the derelicts who make their home in the Delaney Swamp, using them as hired spies and burglars and executioners. The swamp itself is rife with legends of all description and would seem just the setting to ambush and do harm to a rival's defenseless daughter. Sophie first, and next he'll come for my Nancy. You believe Father will seek to silence your daughter's testimony from the day Sophie died? Most fervently and with great urgency. The other day, Nancy managed to step outside into the front yard. I was frightfully proud to see her make progress. She's made of such strong stuff. But just as she reached the gate, the Reverend Gaumont seemed to swoop out from nowhere like a vampire bat in the daylight. What happened? Did he speak to her? He greeted her by name, and then he performed a grotesque trick for her benefit. Grotesque trick? The reverend removed his glass eye and placed it in his mouth, just to frighten my poor daughter and drive her more irretrievably into seclusion. Damn it, men, she is not even safe in our very yard. No one is with that old man striding these parts. Did he try to harm her? Nancy fled inside before anything was done or said to her. Do you believe us, Nate? Will you help us, as we ask? I believe that Father is deranged enough to kill to obtain his way, although I have long suspected that it is more his way to retain others to do the killing for him. I suspect that old Subansky knows where some bodies are buried down below, including those of the family Bats. If you've done background on Halfway There, you've surely heard of the Bats. He annexed them a good decade ago. That's how he gained control of that land I sold you for your lilacs. We can't bring back the Bats family, or my Sophie. We can defend our homes and our families. And to do that, Nate, we need your help. I reckon you do, Hank. And I truly fear that you and Jane will come to the same end as Bill Bats and his wife. My first advice on instinct would be to advise you to flee... Father is capable of anything and everything in the name of conquest. I won't do that. This I know. 
For this reason it cries that we band together to destroy the reverend, not with a murder charge, but by dragging into the light all of his wicked enterprise at the very rotten heart of Harborview. Nate, that man has dominated you for your entire life. He murdered my daughter, drove my wife to near madness from grief, scared the hell from Nancy Dawson, spread vicious gossip about your Lila, and very likely hired that hideous medium Ruby who tortured my wife so with her brutal hokum. Tom, did you ever find her? Left town. Maybe. Maybe she's down in the swamp, too. Another one of the Reverend's victims. How many are there to be? Gentlemen, say no more. I will join you. As much as you both do, I want the old reverend imprisoned and locked away from hurting anyone else. It's the only way to contain such evil in human form. And I may finally be able to stand on my own. It's worth learning how, even at this late date. For Lila. For Lila? I plan to marry Lila Shore. And if I do that with the reverend walking free, she is also added to his list of intended victims. Very well. For that reason, for that reason named Lila, I pledge my assistance to you both in making halfway there in Harborview safer for those we love. If it will end Father's reign of terror, I'm your inside man. And so it begins. A Pembroke, a Dawson, and a Gaumont. A trio of honorable men intent on safeguarding their families, homes, and community from the murderous payback of the Reverend Gaumont. Can Nathaniel Gaumont, with his access to his father's business records, uncover hard evidence to drive his father from halfway there for good? Developments on the next episode of Annex.